Hey guys, Gus here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint non-metallic metal silver or steel. Um, and today I'm going to be painting the sword on this really kick-ass Gandalf the Grey miniature. And as you can see, uh, what I've done, particularly with swords and any flat metallic surfaces, I've actually polished the surface, I've scraped it down to get it nice and smooth, and then actually polished the sword surface. Um, so from here I'll paint on the non-metallic metal, and, and this is just to get the surface nice and smooth. Um, just a word of warning, when you do this, particularly with a sword, you can actually, because it is metal, you can actually make the metal quite sharp, so just be careful with that. Um, okay, so as before, I'm just going to go through a little bit of theory, and then crack straight on into the painting tutorial. So for swords then, as you can see by the diagram in front of you, um, when the sword is sort of horizontal, I found the best way to paint it, and as you can see the light is indicated by the, uh, by the downward pointing arrow, I found that when the sword is horizontal, the best way to paint it is to actually make the, the light increase on the upper edge and then decrease on the lower. As you can see that the light is actually the light area, that, or the light reflected is larger on the upper surface and smaller on the lower. And then as you're tilting the blade to um, various angles, the light then reflects accordingly. So if you look um, at the little diagram of the upward turn sword, the light then starts to reflect more towards the end of the upper surface and the bottom of the lower surface. And if you if you want, you can do uh, you know in increase the uh, the light on the the upper surface and decrease the amount of light on the lower. And then as you turn the sword to face in a downward direction, uh, it's in the opposite. So the light would then reflect towards the upper end of the upper surface and towards um, the lower end of the lower surface, like so. So that's the basic theory behind non-metallic metal silver, and then from there you can go on and add effects, like you can add different colored glazes to, you know, um, show that it's reflecting the sky or reflecting the earth, or, you know, start adding battle damage and things like that. So this video is just very basic. So I'm going to crack straight on with um, painting the sword, and I'm going to do a voiceover as per normal. See you then, guys. Okay, so the colors I'm going to be using for this then is Chaos Black, Codex Grey, Fortress Grey, and Skull White. I'm going to start off with the Chaos Black, just to um, coat over the metal that I've already stripped and polished, just to get a nice smooth texture um, from which to apply the paint. Um, and if you've tried glazes before, you'll know that they're very, very sensitive to the texture that you're actually painting on. So any nooks and crannies and crevices in the actual texture, the paint will sink into because it's so thin and you're actually dragging and moving the paint on the surface. So the surface needs to be very smooth. And a lot of the time with the metal miniatures and even fine cast, the surfaces, especially on swords for some reason, don't seem to be particularly smooth. So I just find it's quite good. So I'm just coating it here in, uh, in uh, black and then I'm actually watering down the black for the final couple of coats just to give it a nice smooth surface from which to build up the non-metallic metal highlights. Okay, so the first uh, color I'm going to be using is the Codex Grey. Uh, I'm just going to load the brush, put a small amount onto the palette, probably about two brush fills, and then add a few drops of medium to that, probably about four drops normally. Um, so it's like a two to one ratio, so per sort of brush load I try and use two drops. I'm just going to mix that in and make sure that the consistency is right. So as before, the cons consistency needs to be akin to like milk, you know what I mean? So it needs to be like skimmed milk. It's a very, very thin, very fine consistency. And then making sure you don't put too much on your brush. Now, remembering back to the theory that I spoke about at the start of this video. So an upturned sword would have more light towards the furthest end of the upper surface and closer in towards the sword hilt for the lower surface of the sword. So when I'm building up these initial highlights, this will kind of establish the, 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 the groundwork, so to speak, for the rest of the non-metallic metal process. So I'm just dragging that color in. Normally it takes about, with the darker coats, normally a bit longer. Um, and you want to um, make it very, very thin for the first coat. Um, and this is why I say that non-metallic metal steel or silver can be a bit harder because of that initial color transition if you don't make the glaze thin enough and you're not patient enough with the initial um, coats of the glaze then you find that you'll get like steps in the transition, it won't be a very smooth transition so this is where 
it requires the most coats of the glaze and requires the most patience this initial stage of creating your non-metallic metals um, and when you're actually dragging the colors uh, where they need to be one of the things that will happen is um, on the edges so the inner edges and the outer edges so like for example with this sword you'll see in the middle of the blade there's actually a, a bloodletting groove um, which normally you'd need to like edge highlight where it will catch the light and when you're doing these glazes it actually almost does it automatically so when you're dragging from the dark to the light to where the paint needs to be it actually deposits a bit of paint on the edges so by that way you're establishing the main light where it hits the blade and also it like almost automatically does a little edge highlights for you which I find quite useful so you don't have to go back at the end and do that and for each uh, successive coat of glaze it'll build up those edge highlights as well as the main light on the non-metallic metal and I find that quite useful with them um, when using these specific glazes okay so as you can see I'm just um, building up the uh, the highlights both on the upper edge and the lower edge and remember what I said is that um, on the upper surface of the sword needs to go towards the end and the lower surface of the sword needs to go more towards the hilt this is um, you know basically that this is like the, the the real basics of doing it I mean you can change the light source if you want to um, and one of the things I like about this is right at the end after you've done your color transitions you can go back in and you can add like chipping and battle damage to the sword um, you can add weathering or you can add um, various lights by actually using glazes over the top of the non-metallic metal. So if you want to do like reflections of the ground and the sky or certain light sources and what have you, but this gives you that general non-metallic metal base from which to work and from which to build up after you've uh, after you've done this sort of initial stage and getting the sword right. But um, as usual it's about contrast and what you'll find when you're doing this initial step is it, it doesn't push the contrast and you get you like a bit when you finish this first stage you're like hmm that doesn't quite look right but it, then as soon as you start to build up the contrasts as you'll see later um, it really starts to stand out so this is just kind of giving you general ideas as to where the paint needs to go so for the the second highlight then I'm going to use a bit of fortress grey there's no need to use a great deal of paint because of course you're using less and less paint with each successive glaze um, adding a few drops of of medium to that and making sure that you uh, give the medium a bit of a shake before you use it because you can find that it does tend to separate inside the little dropper bottles or inside any container really so excuse me same again um, now a small amount of paint on the brush and of course now you're just working from an even smaller surface so instead of dragging all the way from the ends to the light point you're just dragging from a bit further in um, to the center of um, your now established um, highlight from the uh, from the initial codex gray um, and one of the things I should actually mention is that it's very useful to mix your own grays you find with pre-mixed grays they normally include a bit of color so for example codex gray tends to be slightly slightly blue and fortress gray tends to be slightly slightly red so whenever you're working with greys, this is just for ease of use, I'm showing you, you know, paint out of the pot. But if you want to make a pure black to pure white, um, it's always advisable to mix your own greys. Um, but this is just for, for ease of use, so that's something you can try, you know, in your own time. Use them out of the pot or mix mix them yourself. It's, it's up to you. Um, I personally quite like the little slight, ever so slight tints of colour that, uh, that are in these pots. I find it quite interesting. So... With um, for this stage, then with the fortress grey, um, it's going to require a few um, a few less coats of glaze. Um, so I mean, with the codex grey, it took about four or five. With this one, it's only going to take about three. And as before, um, when you're dragging the fortress grey in to the light area, it's going to deposit some paint on the edges, so the inner um, blood groove, um, if that's what it's called, and the outer edge of the sword. And that way, it's going to build up the edge highlights really nicely as well as giving you that, that central point of light um, which the steel is reflecting um, so yeah so like I said decreasing the areas is key because what I mentioned right at the start of the narration is that there tends to be a bit of an issue with steel and with um, with silver when doing the non-metallic metals is the color transition now you need to be very careful when you go up to the lighter stages to make sure the paint is very very thin and to make sure that you're dragging in from a smaller surface, not all the way from the ends, whilst you're going to completely ruin it. 
So you need to make sure that you decrease that surface area each time, make sure the paint is nice and thin. And as usual with light colors, you tend to get quite a bit of chalking and buildup, and that ties into keeping it nice and thin. So for the final color then, of course, we're going to go all the way to white. So with this one then, same again as the Fortress Grey, probably about one brush, brush load and about two or three drops of medium, um, and keeping it very, very thin. Remember that chalky buildup is like enemy number one when it comes to doing these light colors. So make sure you keep it nice and thin. Don't overload the brush. Um, and the white also tends to dry very, very quickly. So you need to make sure that you put your glaze on, drag it where it needs to be, and then leave it. Don't over manipulate it because you'll end up with like a chalky surface. So as you can see now, I'm going right in to the center of those light points, um, dragging it in to where it needs to be, but very, very close, decreasing that, that range that I'm dragging in. And as you can see now, it's starting to build up on the edges as well as the central light points. And it's going to make that non-metallic metal effect really start to stand out now, because now we're getting the contrast all the way from black to white, which is what it needs to be. With any non-metallic metal, it needs to be black to white, very stark contrasts, with whatever color you're using in between, in this case sort of a gray, right? Or in the case of gold, you know, your browns and your yellows. So contrast is key. Um, and as I mentioned before, actually, in the last tutorial, painting in monotone can be quite an interesting exercise just to make sure you get your contrast right. So for example, Gandalf the Grey, imagine painting the whole thing in just black to white, the entire miniature. And that way, it, it makes you concentrate on the contrast that is needed to make non-metallic metal stand out. So now, as you can see, what I'm doing now is, after I've established those central highlights, I'm actually really lightly loading the brush and just dragging it along those edges. I wouldn't want to use pure white for this because of chalking and basically because the white is too strong. But that, that very thin down glaze color with a light load on the brush, just dragging it along the edges just to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, and towards the end of this, I'm actually going to add in tiny little highlights in the in the darkest areas just so that almost it's like the light is glinting off of the blade. But for now, just making sure I get those edges right and getting the central points right. Um, and now what I'm going to do is right down towards the hilt on the upper surface, right in, into the black there, um, there's a small sort of edge on the bottom of the sword, which I'm just going to catch with the white paint just to make it stand out. And as I said, this is where the blade seems to be sort of catching the light. And right on the end there where it's black, you want to sort of give it a stark edge highlight and contrast right at the end of the blood groove and on the actual edge of the sword, the sharp edge. So it looks like it's just catching the light right on the edge. And this this is like the point where where you, where you get to the end of the non-metallic metal and you're like, okay, you know, now I can see it looks like non-metallic metal once you've, you've pressed those or pushed those central highlights all the way to white and you're catching those dark edges and dark recesses with um, with a bit of white paint like it's glinting in the light. And I find this really makes it stand out um, from here. And doing the same again on the bottom edge, just the um, the bottom edge of the, the blood groove where it would catch the light, just highlighting that and also the end of the sword. Um, it's almost like creating a really, really small little transition with the glazes. If you're using pure paint, it's too stark, um, the contrast. So with the glazes, you can, you can make it look um, more sort of natural, if that makes sense, as in the blade is the light has traveled along the blade and then just caught on the edge. So as you can see here, this is basically non-metallic metal, silver or steel. Um, and it's effective, it's simple. And once you get practice at it, it's quite easy to do. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial on non-metallic metal steel. Um, I hope you find it useful. And from here, you can start adding in any of your own effects and start playing, so to speak. So hope you've enjoyed it, guys, and uh, and take care.